Yeah. Okay. Now listen to me. This is Van Jackson. Okay. Van is with Lee County. Okay. okay. Yeah. This is this is Mike. I mean, this is uh, Tom Franklin. Tom is with us here at the sheriff's office. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're simply going to kind of walk back through the events. I'm going to start from the very beginning and tell you everything from day, day one. Last night. I'm going to be straight up. You're going to do what now? I'm going to tell you from the very beginning until all the way to last night. Okay. I'm going to tell you everything. Well, Even the shit that I did and everything else, I'm going to be straight up. Well, you up. got to. If you don't. But you're with Lee County. Yeah, I'm with you. You'll be able to help me a little bit on the shit up there. You're going to work with you, you know, And you're going to be able to help me out. That's right. Listen to me. I'm going to, we both will go to bat for you with our DAs, but listen to what I'm telling you, Jimmy. Understand that Van nor I are district attorneys or judges. We don't have the final say they do, okay? Just understand that so you don't think that I'm trying to buffalo you. I'm going to go to bat for you. Okay. I've worked with Van for years. He's going to go to bat for you, okay? Right. Before I start, I really got to tell you something. On the guy with Butch, that man will have me killed in this jail. Okay, I'm being straight up with y'all. He'll have me killed in here, and I know this. What are you talking about? Butch, the guy that's still alive. Right. He'll, he'll kill me. He'll, he'll, I know for a fact I'll be dead when I go over here within two weeks. The guy with Lee County, when I'm going to come straight up tell y'all everything about that, them people is mob related. I'm more or less dead anyways from right now when one picture hit the TV. I'm a dead man anyways. Because his, his son, big time monster, Terry Rackler. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm well, sure we'll, you probably know that. Well, but look, we'll, yeah. we'll get into all that in just a second, okay? All right. Oh, just a second. Where, how far did you go in school? Ninth grade, and I went and got my GED from CDCC. Okay. This is the written of what I told you earlier, okay? And that says you completed the ninth grade and got your GED at CBCC so you can read and write. say it's going to be about seven months, okay. six months. August? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I around that time of, around of that time, 2001. Right, right. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you was arrested for, for breaking into cars. Right, for stealing cars and shit. Matter of fact, my plea just got worked out. I'm not supposed to sign it tomorrow. Okay. But, uh, fuck. All right. Anyways, when he got me out, I had no, my family had no money to get me out. For some reason, he got me out. And All right, I mean, when you say he... Mike, Mike Caruth got me out of uh, jail. Mike Caruth right. is a bail bondsman. Right, Tri-County. Tri-County bondsman. Right. And he got you out on bond right. without you paying anything. Right, my sister only paid 200 bucks, and my mother-in-law has her house up for it. But she had a name but $20,000 in the value of her house. Okay. All right, anyways. Okay. So I'm trying to do good when I first get out. I'm doing construction framing and stuff, but I'm paying my lawyer and uh, my bad check I had in Columbus. I wasn't able to pay my Caruth. All right, and it had been like maybe three months I went down the road, and uh, he come up to me and all. He's like, Jesus, I need you to start paying me. He says, If you don't, I'm gonna have to lock you back up. I says, Man, look, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can right now. He says, Well. He says, if I can work something other up, something other, you can get you some money on. He says, I'll come and get you and mention it to you. If you like it, we'll do it. So, well. So, 
So he comes to you, tells you you got to pay him, or he's going to lock you up. Right. And you say, okay, I'm doing the best I can. Exactly. And, and then uh, he says, well, he's going to think of something for you to make money, and he'll come get you, tell you what it is. If you like it, y'all can do it. Right. Okay. All right. So about another, he kind of just come by the house every once in a while, still fill me out a little bit for about a couple, two, three weeks, really. Coming back to the house off and on a lot. And uh, I got in an argument with Kay, my fiance's mother, and I had to leave my camper that I was staying in front of the house with. Well, that left me with no place to go. He let me stay in his office over there across from the courthouse at the bonding company in the back. Well, I stayed there for a little bit, and uh, I was about to lose my old lady because we were so down and out, and he giving me $5 or $10 a day just to make it. All right, and he comes up. He says, I want you to ride with me. I said, okay. I get in the car and we ride, you know, just a little bit of small talk. He's more or less like, so where are y'all riding? Uh, in his Crown Vic, and we're just mostly just driving in, in the Phoenix City area. Right? Okay. You know, he, I guess he felt safe in his car to talk. And uh, we got in his car, we're driving around, he's talking about us and said, you ready to make money? Because I just got to tell him about I feel like she's about to leave. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, I'll solve that for you. And uh, he mentioned Bill and Oberlika. Uh, uh, I don't even remember what their real the first names and relation is, but I just knew of them. So what did he say? He says, well, I, he was mentioning it about, well, where can we get a lot of money at? He says, oh, we'll just bust up in there and just some ski masks. Just hold them down. We'll just take the money and leave it. Okay. I'm like, well, I said, like, I got to think about that now. So that shit scares me, you know, because I knew the people and I knew what it, what it was about before it got caught. You know, so who like, brought up their name? He brought up them. You or him? Okay, so when he asked you who had money, you said... Right, because see, I worked for the people and I worked in Opelika. Okay. I worked for the man when I was reaping the cars for him. The old man or his son? His son, Terry, the mobster. Terry, okay. Okay, and uh, anyways, we got seen the house and all. We come by and looked at it, you know. <clears throat> and, uh, when we got to get a look at it, we went into the dark. Okay. When it got dark, see, this is that other guy I was also telling you about, James. James. Okay, see, he involved him on that when I started mentioning the place. He went and got him. And when he got him, we all, it was more or less like a little old crew, but a little team we had going at that, on that day. And uh, we looked at the place, filled it out. He washed his car real good. He went and got us our little, little boggins. That we didn't wind up using it all for some fucking reason. He told us not to. And uh, he wound up getting us the guns. You know, How many guns? There was two. There was a tape nine and uh, just a regular nine. I don't, I don't know what kind of nine it was. It's just a semi auto. And uh, it's a little small. Little Who had them? Uh, Mike handed it to me. And you had which one? I had the, uh, the little one. The little regular nine millimeter. Right. Who had the tape nine? That's the black guy. And where did it come from? Uh, from Mike? Beyond, oh yeah, both of them come from Mike. You know, okay. So I was mentioning it to him and shit, and I was telling him about what type of people it was. And both 9mm? Yeah. Or was one a different caliber? No, both of them were sure? I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you, but they look like both 9s to me. You know, I thought they were both 9s. Okay. Alright, and uh, anyways, we're looking at the place, going by, checking it out, you know. And uh, before all that, he really took us to a storage unit over there on Pierce Road. Okay. We had to clean it out. We had to pull up the blazer that he has, that little red blazer that he's got. Mm -hmm. We pulled it up in the garage there and because uh, we had to clean it out. When we pulled up the truck in there, me and the black boy James had to wait for Mike to come back. What Mike was doing, he was buying gloves, he was getting masks, he was getting uh, 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 they had to go get together and go out is what it was. And uh, when he come back, we was all getting it all ready and everything, and uh, he was telling us how to do it, you know, watch out for hair falling off, you know, get you a good bath first, wear your long sleeve shirts, he said, you know, do all DNA tests, you know, they'll suck up the carpet from 
off the floor, you know, and find out everything. He says, be real careful what you do. He's like, wear you some shoes you don't usually wear. He says, I'll be putting footprints and all that and figuring out, trying to find your shoes and match it up to the prints in the dirt. Mike is. Mike's telling you all this, you know, he's trying to figure out. And James. Out. And James. Okay, and, uh, all right. You know, Mike swimming by and going back and forth, you know, checking out the place. And this is part of the flight I'm still talking about. When we got up there, uh, we had to keep waiting for the cars to come by. And there weren't no cars when he could pull up because he used his Crown Victoria to do it because he's feeling sick because he got a cage in the back of the bucket and shit, you know. And uh, he pulls up and he stops in behind that old, old uh, cement store, you know, that little place right on the side of it. He pulls in the back side of it. You know, and the deal in the first of it, that he was coming too. But now all of a sudden, the car can't be left there. It'd be seen. Somebody has to leave with the car. You know, and uh, so he, he lets he makes us get out. He gives us a walkie talkie, and he's got one too. And uh, two clicks for his trouble, and uh, one click for trouble, two clicks for him to come back to get us. So he drove off. He he got he let us he gave us and handed us back the guns and shit because he I guess he didn't want us to hold him in the car you know both of them just got out of jail not long ago or whatever and uh, he handed them back to us he's like all right y'all he said when you do the two clicks I'll come back and get y'all right here at this spot and we asked him what the problem was why didn't he come with us and he's talking you know I mean, he didn't want to leave the car and it's his car you know and uh, so we go ahead. You know, we, we didn't have no choice, there was no backing out of it once we did all that. Were y'all on anything, Jimmy? Were y'all no. smoking dope, drinking? We straight up for real, I was not on, you know, I wasn't. Nothing. I ain't on nothing on crack, no coke. Okay. None of that, you know, I do like to smoke weed, that's what I did. Okay. What about James? James, all I know is that he sells coke, and I know he does weed, that's it. Okay. All right. And uh, we go in there, you know. Keep the door down, you know, do our little thing there, get the money from the place, and uh, we leave, click it, he comes back, picks us up, pops his well, trunk. Back up. What happened inside? You y'all two go in. Yeah. How do you get in? The back door. Did you kick it in? Did they come to the back door? No, see what I did. We got it to the back of the place. Cut the phone line. Okay. Jenny, cut the phone line. As soon as we went up to the door, he opened up the screen door and I kicked the door in. The wood door? Yeah, the wood door. He pulled back the glass screen door where I could kick the wood door. And when I kicked it, we automatically just rushed up in there. Did you have a mask on? No. Did James? No. Gloves? Yeah. You were wearing gloves? No. Okay. And Go in there, you know, get them down on the ground, get them to tell us where the money is. And uh, right before it. Where did they come from? They were in the living room. They were both in the living room, watching TV, reading a book. What were they doing? Watching TV, I believe, because you know, when I keep the door, they just, you know, didn't ask us Conway to tell actually what they were really doing. Okay. But uh, when we got up in there, they both got on the ground. Hysterical as hell. Uh, I keep having nightmares. That's why she's mad. Like tossing and turning and shit in there. Uh -huh. And uh, got him on the ground. Was asking where the money was. They told us that it was in the back. He says, "I'm gonna watch you in here. And you take care of the back and get it. I'm gonna walk back here where to get it." Now, well, hold on. The old man says it's in the back. Right. Y'all are asking where the money is. Old man and the woman at the same time said it's in the Both back. of them said it's in the back. Right. So then James says, I'll stay here with him. You take her in the back and get the money. Right. He shoots the dude. He tried to shoot the dude in the ass. He hit him in the fucking right here. Then? Yeah. Why? Because that wasn't what was supposed to have been there. Or what like, wasn't supposed to have been there? From what it was told, it was supposed to have been a safe. There was no safe. But he shot him after you came back up? No, he shot him whenever he was asking where the money was. And they said, it's just, you know, they said, what money, what we got is in the back. Boom. Shot him. 
He shot him. Right. He tried to shoot him in the ass, but he got him in the back. Okay. Got him back in the kidney. One shot. Right, right there. All right. And uh, so I get the bitch, the woman up, and uh, take her in the back. When we take her in the back, and I ask her to wear money, and she, you know, she's about to give it to me. You know, as soon as she reaches down to get it, she tries to grab a little revolver out from there and swing it around on me. You know, and she almost fucking shot my head off. Did she fire? No, she didn't fire. Well, when she come around, she was pulling the hammer back, and I grabbed it and knocked it out of the way. And when I did, I shot her. And, um... Where did you shoot her? Right here in this elbow. Because that was the only thing I could get, because I was fighting with her. And then I had to, you know, get her off of me. Because she was trying her best to fucking pull that hammer back and shoot me with that revolver. And, uh... I shot her with that, and all, all she tried to do is just switch arms on me, and you know, try to shoot me again. You know, it's, so she was still holding the revolver. Right, she was okay. still holding him. You know, I'm like, God damn, woman. You know, I didn't, I did not want to kill him. Right. You know, the whole plan is what he had planned out from us for fucking three to four days straight. Was that you go in there with your past? That way you can just leave him alive and just get what you want. Right. Well, when we're getting ready for it, he's like, y'all need just need y'all's mask here. It's dark. You know, it's fucking dark in the house, you know? And you gotta have some light to see. And uh, so anyways, he was like, well, he says, if you have to kill him, kill him. He says, y'all make y'all's choice. He says, really, I mean, since y'all tell me that it's more or less mom related, and I, I kind of heard about it too, he said, just fuck him. He said, that way I ain't gotta worry about it. I ain't gotta worry about him coming for me once they get to y'all. So we in there, you know, and we're, we got the money and everything. And he was looking Well, let's back up. You and her are still struggling. Yes. She still has the gun. You've shot her one time. Right. What happens after that? Okay, all You're right. still in the bedroom. Right. So I shot her in that elbow there, and uh, she tried to switch around and use the other arm. I shot her in the knee. Told her, just look, quit. You know, so then you shot her in the knee when she tried to switch hands with the gun. Right. And she went down onto the ground and just stayed there. Okay. You know, and I'm like, look, why don't you just fucking quit? That's all I want. She's still holding the gun? Did you no, get the gun? I got the gun before she went to the ground. Okay. And uh, I got the gun. I threw it on the bed, you know. And uh, she's laying on the ground. And I got the money up, you know. I was looking at it. James come back in there and said, what did you get? I handed it to him. Or he could go on off and, you know, just hold it. Because I had to, you know, grab that gun and put it back, you know, in front of the bed this time instead of where it really was. And, uh... So you put the gun under the mattress? Under, yeah, not under the mattress, but under the bed itself, you know. Under the bed on the floor? On the floor, yeah. Okay, you put the, a little thirty-eight revolver? Uh, man, I don't really know what kind of gun it was. I just know it was a revolver. Okay. You handed the money to... Yeah, when I handed him the money to it, no. he was like, well, all right. He started fumbling around the house for more to see if there was any more money. And he says, well, there's nothing else here. He says, I'm going to want you to kill her. He says, you got to make sure that you win this with me. You know, that was my very first person. You know. Yeah. I, I wound up eventually wound up doing it. Like he's just sitting there fucking arguing with me. Fucking do it, motherfucker, do it. And I, once I did, you know, and he walked in there and he popped that, the dude that was in the living room laying on the floor, right there in the living room. So you popped her where? Uh, I popped her in the head. You shot her in the head? Back of the head, front of the head? That's okay. You're getting it off your chest. I just know I'm going to get the dead ones, man, that's all. He walked when he was walking out. He shot him. He shot him in the head? Yeah. Did he only shoot him twice? Once in the back and once in the head? And, uh, in the head. He shot him in the hand. And, uh, in this hand right here. Why did he shoot him in the hand? What was that? Just mostly to make sure that's all the money. You know, that's all he did there. And, uh, as soon as he did, you know, that our money. Walked on out, closed the door behind us, and just walked around the backside, jumped over the fence, and left. 
What about the click and the radio? The click and the radio, we did we had to do that whenever you get to the building. Okay. Whenever we got out through, across the field, over the fence, and behind the building, we clicked it twice. And we had to wait. And uh, he was actually late to come pick us up and was fucking washing his car. Again. And when he finally come up there, he popped the trunk with put the, the guns and the, the money in the back of the trunk. And uh, closed the trunk back, got in the car. He was asking, did everything go okay? Did you, you did kill him, didn't you? You sure you're dead? How much money did y'all get? You sure that was all of it? Y'all ain't trying to keep nothing, no, y'all ain't dog. And uh, <clears throat> after that. How much money was it? Total. Not your cut. How much was it? 30000 30, Ten of these. Once I got back with my money, you know, I just, I knew because since I didn't have nothing, he was living in a fucking business office, you know, no place to really stay. I couldn't just go out and start getting me a place, everything I needed again, you know, so I had to kind of do it slowly. And that way, my mama and I didn't want me thinking something was wrong, you know. And, uh, or my old lady, because she would have left me a long time ago. She would have been thinking about shit like that. And I saw a receipt. Jimmy. Transco transmission. You gave that money was from the Lee County robbery. What well, how much money was that? Sixteen hundred and eighty dollars. You gave that money to who? Uh, your mom in law? No, I gave it to the man at Transco named Chris. For who? Well, was that for your I, truck or something? No, no, uh, I was fixing her mom's truck. Okay. You it been down for over a year and it's a 93 Ford and they got old piece of shit white car that runs hot and shaking real bad on them. They can only make it halfway up the road to the store and back. So with the money from Lee County, you fix that truck? Right. You know, I kind of wanted to, to help. You know, I wanted okay. to help my family that was down because everybody was down. You know, if it weren't for food stamps, we wouldn't have ate, you know. And what else happened to the money? Uh, that was almost 2000 right there. Yeah, and uh, let's see, I bought, I bought a little bedroom suit in the back. Uh, I did buy like, I think it was three pounds, just to, just to fuck around with. Of marijuana? Right. How much was that? So I fuck with. Uh, that was around, right at 2500 Okay. For that, for what so that's was. almost 4500 right there. Right. And you know, just on some, like on another... About fifteen hundred, just mostly went out my nose. You know, Cocaine. Right. Okay. And uh, just the rest of it, you know, it was just like nice places going out to eat. You know, it was, uh, the TV. You know, it was Where did you buy the bedroom suit from? Anyway. Where? Uh, I went to both. I went to the one on the down going to Valley, the two day one. You bought a TV? Yeah. From uh, where? Uh, at the food market on, uh, I believe, mean, number one on Highway 80. And I bought my bedroom suit on the one on Highway 80 and my washer and dryer. In front of uh, Ladonia School? Yeah. And uh, the washer, I, I got it from the food market, you know. Just basically, you know, some of it I'd already had, but a portion of it was mostly from Long story short, you know, just, I ain't no fucking dope here because I fucking lost out on my ass big time away, you know. It was man, my first time ever trying it and it did not work for me, you know, and uh, I just couldn't. So you didn't make any money? I didn't make no money. I just wound up losing all that fucking money and shit, really, you know, and, uh. Well, I ask you this. When y'all left and you put the guns and stuff in the trunk, what happened to the guns? You might say you take care of them. Mike said he'd take care of both guns. You never saw what happened to the guns. I did see what happened to him. What he did, he went to his house in the Grange on Clark Street. All right, and when he went out there, he took him into the house. He drilled out the barrels with uh, some kind of a little drill bit, you know, for forensics when he picked it up or whatever. He stripped, he tore.
tore down the tech, you know, stripped it out, rub, rubbing alcohol all over them and stuff, you know. And uh, he's mostly disassembled them all and cleaned them up. And I don't know where he dropped them off at. I, 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 for real, I don't know because I, I wasn't there for that part because I had to leave to be with my woman where she wouldn't be mad at me for me being gone. Was and, this the same day? No, actually, when he did that, did that to me the next day or the day before. I'm really not sure on that. I know it wasn't my father's in that. Okay. And uh, anyway, where he did it was at that place on Clark Street in LaGrange. And that's um, mostly where he, his tags on his cars, that all goes back there if you don't want that address or something. And uh, after that, you know, I really don't know what happened to the guns. He said he got rid of them. I don't know where he did, where he, where he put them at, though. But after all that, you know, then I started running low on my money again. And, uh, Do you know what James or he did with his money? He bought more cocaine to sell. He was a coke dealer. He bought coke with his money. What about James? That's all I was, he was talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. What about Mike? Mike, he paid off forfeiture from the courthouse, and uh, he paid off... Uh, Arthur Cresley, he paid him $1,100 of that money that went there because Arthur was like part of his business. Arthur who? Uh, Griesland, G -R -E Griesland? Yeah, I think I said G-R-E-S-L-I-N is how you spell it. I just seen his business card. And uh, anyways, you know, that's most of where a lot of his money went. But the other portion, the main portion of it was when he took that eight-day trip. And that eight-day trip was finding out who he needs to see about rounding up the, the right kind of dirt for that hydro, the special kind of hydro they were growing, um, how to clone that hydro plant. You know, and when you're plant. talking about hydro, Jim, you're, you're talking about a plant, a marijuana plant marijuana that's plant. especially grown. It's more potent than the normal marijuana plant. Okay. And it's down, it's more or less of a size to it instead of just grabbing your seat throwing it in the dirt. Right? Okay, but I just want to be clear of what you're talking about. Right, right. I'm talking about marijuana when I say hydro. And uh, <clears throat> see, that's his whole purpose in getting that money right there, is what he said. See, he needed it to where he can work up the deal for the hydro with uh, Rick and his son. Rick was getting a thousand dollars off of each package. Well, let's slow down a minute, okay? Let's make sure we're all on the same sheet of music. James, mainly as far as you know, bought most of his money from the Lee County robbery. He spent most of it on cocaine. Uh -huh. And he's got like a... Do you know anything else that he bought with that money? No, because actually he told me he put like three or four thousand of it up. Okay. And, uh, you know, and Mike, you think he paid some court stuff with his? He did. I to the Russell County Courthouse? To the Russell County Courthouse. One of the judges was giving him a hard time about him not paying one of the forfeitures that he had coming up that he had been paying. So he had to go and pay that forfeiture. A bond forfeiture? Yeah, bond forfeiture. Okay. And uh, he had to pay like four or five different forfeitures because that now bonding company is nothing but a front for whatever it is he really got going on the side. Because when I stayed at his office, I realized that myself. And, uh, because he never would do no fucking bonds. I never see him going out and picking up nobody. He only picked up one person that I've ever known of since I've known a man for the fucking whole eight months or so that I've been out, really. So and, tell me, from there, tell me how you brought up a guy's name named Rick. How does, who is he and how does he come to Rick is a state constable that hangs out mostly around Hertzboro area. And, and uh, Mike Caruth pays his gas to shit like this for them to drive around because they talk about somebody here in the county giving old Rick a hard time or one of them some bullshit and uh, anyways he's paying his bills and shit like that to butter him up so he can get the deal with the hydro because see this hydro it turns over every 90 days there's a million dollars every 90 days being passed through and Mike passed through where? passed through here and out about it. There's somebody here. In the whole state. Right. There's somebody here who's growing it. And growing a quantity of it. That California, this is where it's all going, is California. That's why he made that trip to make the deal to where he made the agreements of when he grew it, that he'd be, they'd be able to take every bit that he gets. 
for 2,500 to 3,000 a pound. And they said, as many as you bring, and we'll buy it. Rick's part in that, for get hooking him up with his son, was that he gets $1,000 off each one. Rick does. Uh, right. Rick is supposed yeah, to. Now, you said Rick had some kind of son that got arrested for 180 pounds of hydro. Where? Uh, in California. All right, and the people in California paid him eighty thousand know, just to sit down, shut up, take keep rap for it. And anyway, they kicked his son out of California for two years. He's not allowed to even go in the state. The law did right. The law kicked him out. All right, and as far as I really know, that Rick's son, I um, believe what he told me is that he's in Virginia. And, you know, that was their first trip they took was to go see his son when they took off. So Rick went with him right. for the last eight days. That's what Mike told me. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so he's gone for eight days. For eight solid after days. After the Lee yeah. County deal. Right. About uh, about four days after the Lee County deal, or three days after that, he was gone. He needed that to where he could go and at least make that connection. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so he gets all that done. But when it comes back from all that traveling he's done done and him paying for Rick going too, he's broke from playing all the forfeitures and all that shit too. Okay. All right. I don't lie. I was just about broke myself. You know, I only had maybe a, a thousand dollars left, and um, I just got fucked out of all my weed. Really, and I was gonna try to make money while I never have to do that shit again. And uh, <clears throat> anyways, he told me to get in the car. He said, "Let's go." Now when was this? This is when he got back, about, about the day after he got back. Okay. He kind of hollered at me, you know, he was like, hey, he says, who do you know? He said, we got to be one more person. He says, I need some more to finish up. He says, I already got the architect and the engineering down on the uh, place that we're going to build it, the hydro uh, laboratory at. He's like, I just need this last little bit that we're going to get here to make it where I can build it. And they're going to give me uh, 15 plans to start out. And uh, by then, we'll, we'll clone them when they get older and we'll make more money. He's like, that's all I want. He says, ah, because he told me what it was and what he's working up to is a million dollars every 90 days. You know, and that's actually what he really had worked on and he got. But all he's even got the grow light, the little shit, the plan them in and everything else. He's just waiting on that Rick's son to do one last thing for him. You know, he wouldn't ever tell me what that was. I think it's the to bring the plants, the little, the little small hydro plants about like this. He's bringing them that many of them. And then when he brought them over here, he said he was going to grow them a little bit and then clone them. Clone them and then grow them. Because if you, when you clone them, that keeps all the seeds from growing up in your hydro, is what they were saying, and it just makes it better. You know? And they're charging like $5,000 a pound for this shit, really, is what they're telling me. And, um, Anyways, he said that he wanted to go do one more thing so he can get that where he can have enough to make his little old place that he was wanting to. And uh, I was telling him that I was broke, and he's like, look, he says, we're not going to do nobody. He says, all we're going to do is I'm going to walk up there, and I'm going to show him these little pieces of paper saying that out. What it was, that's what I was telling you said earlier. Look on his computer. He said he kind of erased it out of his computer, but I don't believe it. But he made copies of Al Green when he made one of them uh, search warrants or some kind of piece of paper saying, you know, searching the place, you know, this, that, and the other. And uh, he blanked it all out, put State of Alabama versus Butch Bowery, you know, and uh, put down there on the rest to, to search your house and every contents in your safe, you know, lolly dog. And he goes up and knocks on the dude's door because he went to Ranger Joe's to get a little patch that says Agent. Oh, well, he's got a drug enforcement hat. He went and bought a long sleeve shirt, you know, dark blue. Looks like a cop. So what was he wearing now? He was he was wearing like a drug enforcement, you know, uniform. He was. Did it his, have drug agent on it? Yeah, on his hat. Oh, he had drug enforcement. What did it have on his shirt? Agent. Had just a, agent. Just agent right here. On a blue shirt. On a dark blue shirt. T-shirt. Right, uh, no button up shirt. Long button up shirt. shirt. Yeah. But I can tell you what happened. Anyways, he walks up to the door, knocks on it, the guy answers the door, he walks inside, shows him the papers, you know. Now, where are you? I'm in the car. You see, sure? He, oh, I'm positive, I swear to you. Because, see, I drove. The deal of it was that he wanted me to drive 
That way he can just get out on the passenger side instead of having to switch out whenever he gets out and me go to the driver's side, you know. And uh, I was like, all right. I was dry. I drove up in the yard. So the why, the, why, the, why the police bit, Jimmy? To get into the door. Okay, but I mean... He wanted to keep it because it was so in close to town and so neighbors were so close. He wanted to keep it low down and less noise as possible. So what he wanted, what he had told me what he was going to do was go in there and he was going to get the man and leave the kid. Whose idea was it to go to that house in the first place? Well, this goes back to the Lee County deal. When I mentioned about that guy there, I said, and he on the only one in our own town here is the only other one I know. And uh, he's like, well, he said, let's go do this one up here, Opelika. And uh, by the time we did that one, he got to thinking about the other place that I had told him. So you had told him about Butch and the guy in Lee County. Right, and he knew Terry. about it. Is that his he name? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Terry's his Rackle, name. Right. Rackle, yeah. So you told him about Butch and Terry. Right. Because see, it, whenever I was telling him about it... Do they know like, each other? No. As know. far as you know, they don't know each other. Right. Okay. All right. And see, as far as when I mentioned that guy's name, he's like, bingo. He says, I know them. He says, they sell that shit out of the back of that lot, don't they? No, which one? Uh, Butch. Okay. And I was like, damn, man, how would you know that? He's like, I got my little insides, you know. And somebody on the inside here in the county is telling them shit like, you know, who's being watching what about Metro and all this. Because he's going to them people and telling them, telling them people that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I never could get in that good to find out who that person was, but it might have been Rick, hell, I don't know. And, uh, anyways, kind of rambled on there for a second. I forgot where the fuck I was. Well, you was up to the point that he was walking up to the house. Yeah. And what the plan was supposed to be. Right. The plan that was supposed to be in is to go and knock on the door. He made it to where it was about 9.30, where the kid should have been asleep. You know, that's the whole intention was when the kid was in the bed asleep, don't fuck with him. He don't know nothing. He won't know nothing. He'll wake up and his dad's just, you know, either broke or gone with us. And um, get in there. Everything looked like it was going good. I always seen the man standing there. And uh, he comes out with a man handcuffed, throws him in the car. Front or back? In the back. In the back. Handcuffed in the front or in back? Oh, handcuffed in, in his back. In his back? Yeah. Hands behind him? Right, hands behind him. Handcuffed him down, you know, put him in the car. <sighs> Goes back inside. You know, he wants posted went back inside. And it was when he soon as he put him in, he closed the door and walked right back in there without telling me I'll be back or nothing. Comes back out. The kid cuffed, or is he just no, walking? No, he's just walking in. And you know, I'm like, oh shit. You know, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, he was in, he was in the living room. You know, the kid wasn't in the living room, man. Okay, what was he wearing? The kid. I'm going to say it's like a maybe the greatest looking shirt. I know it's a long sleeve shirt. I really can't tell about the clothes. Okay. What about the pants? I just know he had some on. <laughs> okay. You know, I really, I didn't pay attention to what they were wearing. Okay. And uh, cause I still tripping out. He's got a fucking kid with us. And um, he goes out there to the 431. That's the spot that y'all know about and shit. So y'all drive out there? Right. I drive out there. Get out of the car. Me and him, me and Mike Rude talks first when we get out of the car. We leave him in the back seat still. And he was telling me about it. He's like, look, he says, I had a breed of kid too, Lolly Dog. He's like, he was he was in the living room. I had no choice, you know. Uh, he's like, well, he says, let's get the man out and tell him if you don't give us the money at the house, that we'll just do his kid right here, right now. Right out here in this isolated place. He gets the man out. Walks him away from the car.